Fall is just around the corner, which is an important time of year for photogs, both novice and veteran alike. Maybe you're starting out your journey with a digital photography class and you're looking for a camera that's gonna work with you, not against you. Or you're already making money as a pro and you want something for your senior portraits. Maybe you're looking at this decaying landscape and you think, hey, all these dying leaves, it's a great time for me to start my landscape journey. Or you're looking for a gift for that special someone, which might be yourself. The M50 Mark II might be your huckleberry. Or your huckleberry, you be the judge. What are we looking at, DJI? <laughs> this track is so awesome. I'm set it to my face, but you know, the pocket two of Dread and Birdwatch, then you know, <laughs> let me explain why the M50 Mark II might be your Huckleberry. Back to it. So, if DJI is pay you paying attention, DJI? You see me? <laughs> you see some dubs down there. That's what you like, huh, DJI? Fix your app, by the way. It hasn't worked in about two weeks, and I can't fly my drone. <laughs> DJI, you are great. Sponsored by DJ, just kidding, no I'm not. <laughs> hey China, tracking's off. I didn't know Stevie Wonder was my uh, cameraman today. But initially I wasn't sold on the M50 Mark II. To me, it was the Mark I repackaged, much like you would see with the Fast and Furious franchise where they'd release 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They already have the format, so why spend the money on innovating when they can already take this one to the bank by putting a new sticker on it. It's the same thing, just repackaged. That's how I looked at the M50 Mark II until I picked it up and it's grown on me. The reason I got it was because I wanted something for YouTube that I can just set it on a tripod and just go. Well, that and I got a killer deal on this. It was $350 for the tripod kit lens and that's about all I need. That said, there is a few things I am disappointed about because I know Canon that you could have put them in, but you decided not to, you tricky orangutans. So first things first, we're gonna look at the body. Now it's a very minimalist design all the way around with few bells and whistles, which is a catch 22 because if you're starting out your photography journey, yeah, it's gonna be less overwhelming for you to look at and process, but at the same end, it would be nice to have some custom keys, dedicated buttons or dials to change your aperture and your ISO easily without having to fiddle with the touch screen, which does work well, by the way, but here in Minnesota, in the dead of winter when you have your fat gloves on, I don't want to be fiddling with the screen because it's next to impossible no matter how good it is. So dedicated buttons, please don't go to the wayside. I love them. Another annoyance with the body to me is sure it has a mic jack and a swivel screen for vlogging, but when you tilt it out and around, the mic jack gets in the way of the screen from tilting without having to jumble and jar it around. I'm surprised a lot of people haven't talked about this, especially because the G85 had the same problem, but Panasonic solved it with the G95. Now, if we talk about specs, the camera's pretty standard, but to me, it's not in a bad way. It's a 24 megapixel crop sensor, which comes out with a very crisp image, Canon colors. They have never looked nicer, especially with this EFM. To backpack, because it's an EFM sensor, who knows how long Canon's gonna drag this on for because now they're investing into the RF system and as we've seen before with Nikon and their J series, maybe the EFM will go to the wayside sooner rather than later. I hope not because this system has some compact glass for almost every occasion. I say almost because to me they don't make a great wildlife lens, but that's for another day. Another thing I wish Canon did was make this weather sealed. Sure, plastic is lighter, but having some rubber gaskets and maybe a magnesium body might add a little bit of weight, but it would also add a little bit of assurance, especially because this is one of their highest selling bodies, that this is gonna be durable. If we're talking about specs, there's no in-body stabilization like you would see on other competing cameras, but in turn, this camera, the M50 Mark II is very small, and it'd be hard to jam one of these into a body, and Canon hasn't really jumped aboard that IBIS ship until this year, basically. <laughs> My last bummer when it comes to the tech side of things on the M50 Mark II is the crop in 4K. It is 
massive. Not only that, you lose dual pixel autofocus, which is the golden goose of Canon. It sets the standard for autofocus. And when you set it to 4K, Canon uses this dumpy contrast-based pulsing autofocus. So it forces you to go back in time and use full HD, which isn't bad. I think it's fine for YouTube. But 4K is crippled on this. Familiar, right? So anyways, let me put on some real shoes and we will go out in the field and street walk with this, see what we can get. Ah, I'm old. So if you can't tell, we're doing a little bit of a vlogging test. The optical image stabilization is turned on. Digital IS is off because I need that full sensor if I want to hold it for vlogging. That said, this is filmed at full HD, so I get the full readout of the sensor as well. Exposed manually using the one over 50 degree shutter rule. How does it look? How does it sound? I think for vlogging, the M50 Mark II really does hit the mark. Obviously, it doesn't have 4K, any crazy bit rates, but it is the standard in almost every regard. The reason I think it'd be a great camera for video would be the dual pixel autofocus. This is something that I really missed, especially using my Panasonic systems for video. Sure, Canon might not do a lot of things, but the one thing it does well is autofocus. So one thing about a 4K crop that's kind of nice on this crop sensor is it allows me to get closer without having to get closer or change out to a much heavier wildlife lens. This is filmed handheld 4K at 70 millimeters. How does it look? Why do they call seagulls seagulls? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be called bagels. <laughs> you get it? If you thought that was a funny joke, you have to Venmo me at Tan Toby Keith. All right, dual pixel autofocus test. Also, one thing I think Canon did very well was implement this little tripod with the remote. I think it is a slick feature because it allows me to move around within the scene and starts anytime I want. One thing I wish the tripod itself had though was a head of some sorts. That way you can tilt it and straighten your horizons because this looks like I am stroking out. So I came here to the duck pond to visit the ducks, but they're having none of it because I didn't bring them bread. It's not good for ducks. Could have brought the popcorn, but I don't have any. So they're not giving me any love today. That said, let's go see if we can get some street shots as well and maybe some more cinematic B-roll. Surely a lot of people have picked up the M50 Mark II for its casual video shooting experience or live streaming, but don't forget that this is a great stills photography camera as well. With its 24 megapixel crop sensor, it produces some lovely tack sharp images with those Canon colors that we've come to know and love. If you did need more detail in post-production, you can always do HDR shots or stitch together multiple images. For any of your backyard wildlife photography needs, such as shooting your doggo, the Canon M50 Mark II can do up to 7.4 frames per second. With that dual pixel autofocus, it works like a treat for hybrid shooting. But if we're gonna talk about actual wildlife photography, this brings me to my one main concern with the EFM mount. They don't really have a wildlife lens and are they going to kill the EFM system? I really hope they don't because the M50 Mark II sold so well that I feel like they should at least try to squeeze a few more years out of it, maybe produce at least one nice wildlife lens, a weather sealed body, maybe with higher megapixels would be a great bonus, but we will see. They are putting a lot of effort into the RF mount, but I really don't want to go there yet. I'm having a hard time letting go of the EF system because I have so much glass for it. 
I could always adapt, but it doesn't always work out like you think it will. Would I buy the M50 Mark II again? I already bought it, so why would I? No, but really, it is a great camera, and I do recommend it for anyone doing casual shooting. Let's get into photography or social media campaigns because it's such a darn easy camera to use for anyone of any skill set to enjoy. So that is it for now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Matt's Notes on Instagram. See ya.